preparations for the Trans Australia trip. Um, this is a big trip. It wasn't long ago that I was uh, in my garage looking at my vehicle. Well, I didn't realize, realize that I was looking at my vehicle. It was pointed out to me by a fan, knew my work, uh, pulled up outside the street and uh, said, hi, Andrew. And he said to me, I know exactly what you were doing. He said, I do it all of the time. I just sit and I stare at my truck think about what I want to do, where I want to go, and I do it all of the time. The preparation is for a, a round trip, not around Australia, but certainly across Australia from the easternmost point to the westernmost point through the red centre. Now, I've done a lot of long expeditions, and this is one of the longest that I've ever done, and I'll be doing quite a bit of it completely on my own. So these videos are all about what I pack in my vehicle and why. Well, you know what they say, 90% done, 90% still to go. Let's start with what has still got to go in. Uh, there's my, uh, there's a tent for Kate. That's my air jack, microphones, a drone, a mattress in case I want to sleep on the roof. In fact, Kate will also use that mattress. My grab bag, which I have checked the contents of, that's still got to go in. And I'm taking a bit of uh, merchandise for my followers uh, to be handed out at the meet and greet. That, that's in that box there. And some sponge material. I want to just make things a little bit more comfortable inside the vehicle when I'm sitting in there and doing my uh, video downloads every evening. This is the jack that I'm carrying. I decided not to take a high lift. This is an air jack, one of the best air jacks on the market. It's my, made by Tackler and that will go on my roof rack. Here's a demonstration of it being used. The discussion on whether an air jack is preferable to a high lift jack is a subject all its own. To me, it's about a 50-50. There are pros and cons each way. Torches stroke flashlights that I will be taking. The TM16 GT, or otherwise known as the Sun. I'm gonna call it the Sun. Head lamps. This is a Nightcore something. Looks like that. And then this little guy that they, uh, I don't think they sell anymore. Also a little Nightcore head torch. Uh, the little LED. So those two and I store those around my headrests. And a handheld torch which is in the back. This is a Nightcore uh, T, uh, MT50C and then lastly uh, a Fenix LD02. Little, little indestructible little Fenix uh, that I have and it was given to me as a gift at one of these outdoor expos, the one in America. Um, and it ended up in a wash in the washing machine twice and still working. That is the sum total of what I'm carrying in my truck. Now this you'll be interested in. I'll show you the details of this now. This is my tire puncture repair kit. Patches, spare valve and patch, mushroom, they're called mushrooms, tire repair for my for cleaning out the hole for threading in the uh, the rubber strings. I have valve tool, patch, heavy duty patch, heavy duty patch, some more lighter duty patches. And you know I hardly ever use this thing. Uh, that's a spare for inflator for my pump system. I realized um, on the other trip that I only had this one and if I had lost it, I would be in trouble. So that's my spare. Another mushroom and a scraper for cleaning out if you're doing a repair, cleaning and roughening, roughening the rubber to get the vulcanizing to work well. Okay, and that's for rolling when you're putting on a, a thing, you roll that on like this to give it a really good adhesion. That's what that's for. Um, I have here, these are the original safety strings. Um, you can see I haven't used many of them. I haven't used any of them. All right, those ones there. I have rubber cement. It's still 
soft. Make sure it's still soft. It is. I've got three tubes of this because this tends to dry out. So um, before a trip, it's a good, good idea to just make sure it's still it's still good. It's a little bit of hand cleaner, you know. <laughs> changing a tire after changing a tire, normally everything gets very very revolting. Um, that is lubricant. That is a lubricant for um, <clears throat> it's a rubber galvanizing lubricant for when putting in the strings. So that's what that is for. Uh, what else here? Yes, these are vital. These are more patches, small patches for small thorn repairs, things like that. And in here, spare valves. There's a valve in there. There's a whole lot of extra little bits and pieces of spare stuff. Um, connectors, valves. I only have one, I have two valves, that should be enough. Two spare valves should be enough. So that's what I put in there, and that's my puncture repair kit. And this particular kit has been with me for a very long time. This might interest you as well. This is how I pack my jack. I pack it in foam. It's a heavy item, and I really don't want it flying around anywhere. So I just got some foam cut out, and uh, that's not going to make any noise or do any damage if... Uh, if the vehicle moves about. In here I also have fluids. Uh, uh, that's uh, engine oil. That's, uh, what is that? Transmitter. That's brake fluid. That is a fuel cleaner. So that goes in like that. And this foam is really good because you can just push things and just wedge things in there. So the tire repair kit goes in there. Plenty of space. And then my tool bag. Still got some space in there for something that I can put in. And then I'll have my fridge back. And that's it. Fridge is a Snowmaster 52 litre and I've got gaps around it. So that perfect place to put stuff that you're probably not going to need every day, but might need in an emergency. My box full of um, repair stuff, uh, wires and glues and lubricants and all that kind of stuff is packed in here. And behind there, I've got um, things like uh, more engine fluids. Um, I've got uh, transmission fluids. I could tell you what I could get, but it's just basically the stuff that you might need if you were to do a service yourself or repair a brake system or repair a clutch system you need some fluids there back i will probably never use them in the life of this vehicle but just knowing they're on board makes a difference if i need to do a repair i can when i was camping on the beach i noticed that with the wind that happens it happens all night drove me completely around the bend and I tried to pack them down to try and reduce the, the tinkling sound. And so, off you come. I don't need you. Um, and I will replace you with something simple. It'll do the job. And on the inside as well, on both of these sides. Well, there they are. No more. What I like to do when setting up for a trip is I, I think about what new stuff I've added to the vehicle and, and what could break. Trying to see into the future, what, do I, what is new that is untested? And the only thing I can think of that is significant is the, uh, the wheel carriers the, and these wheel carriers they've got a great reputation i really like them uh because of ease of use and they you know that but what happens if they break what happens if something goes wrong so i'm going to make up a bag with ratchets i'm going to have uh that set in the vehicle so imagine if it did fail and I had to put the spare wheel on the roof rack. I'd need a way of tying it down. I could get a special bracket but I'm not expecting the... it really is 
plan for worst case scenario without being ridiculous and just carrying so much stuff that the vehicle is overloaded, which will potentially cause problems. So it's a balancing act of keeping it light, but being smart. Another thing I want to show you, which you might quite like, Lighting inside the vehicle, um, traditional, that's a fairly common uh, light found in a lot of the Alucare products. Uh, I don't particularly like it because it's very bright, uh, but it's a good general purpose light. Uh, these I've already shown you in a previous video, the LR10 Nightcore little lantern. I've got a few of those around the vehicle, but look at this. This comes from my least favorite shop in the entire world. In fact, I hate going there. Guess which shop it is? It's a little LED lantern and I've got power boxes around the vehicle and so that's my little LED light. So if I'm cooking in this area here it's the perfect little little LED light. It's a very, it's a very flat light and it's not particularly bright and it comes from IKEA. Yes, I hate Ikea. Two pieces of equipment that might uh, interest you. My Bush knife. This is a Jack Law made by my friend Sandy Jack in the UK. He's a knife knife maker and that, this you'll be very familiar with. Most of you the ARB easy deflator. I've yet to find something faster. I've seen a lot of um, different pipes and tubes and everything and they all look quite, in, quite interesting. I still think this is probably the fastest. Anyway, that's what I use to deflate my tires. So where am I going to sit for the next seven weeks? Well, most of the time is going to be spent in here, my cab. Let me go through it with you, show you how I've decked it out for filming. That's a stereo microphone. The cable there runs along there. There is a light there that I can turn on from a switch up here and it goes down to the Osmo camera there that is used for my in-camera talking shots. Navigation, I've got the Hema HX1, I've got a light that goes to orange and white depending on what I like, I've got the emergency hammer, I have uh, note papers and papers and things like that and a pen there, my Snowmaster remote control, a dash cam, uh, down there I have the, it's the yellow brick tracker. It sends a message to uh, my website on where I am. My iPhone and my iPad. So my iPad obviously I can use for navigation and entertainment. And that's really about it. Not uh, very exciting. I don't like too much clutter in my cab and I have a nice comfy um, little thing here. Well I have just five days to go before I go. This is one of the very longest uh, non-stop expeditions I've ever done and uh, I'm actually getting more and more excited about it as I get closer and closer to leaving and closer and closer to completing the task of vehicle preparation. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the three videos. I'm not sure exactly when I'll be posting the first of the actual expedition videos but it'll be as soon as I can manage to get somewhere and do some editing putting them all together for you. Hope you've enjoyed them. Thank you for watching. I would like to announce a new member to the White Household. <laughs> Lights! I will be doing a video very soon about the trip carrier and all of the modifications I have made since the Canning Stock route, and it will be a separate video on its own. And this is part of uh, the light system that I'm actually fitting just prior to my Trans Australia expedition. And 